Hello and welcome to AWCI's Convention in Intex Expo Reconstructed. Today's solution showcase is Moffett Truck Mounted Forklift Features. I am Anne Marie Salvatelli, AWCI's Director of Education, and I will be your host for today's presentation. Before we start, a few housekeeping items. All attendees should be on mute during today's presentation. However, we ask that you please mute your phones or computer microphones as well to ensure that we keep a clear line for our presenter. Should you have a question at any time during the broadcast today, please submit it using the question box in your good webinar dashboard. We will have a brief Q&A at the end of our presentation. We have several handouts um, for today's uh, showcase solution, so you can download the three PDFs in the handouts tab on the dashboard. Today's presenter is Tony Danity, Product Manager, Truck Mounted Forklift at High Up USA Incorporated. Tony has been in the industry for just over five years, but is no stranger to heavy equipment. Previous to his role at High Up, Tony spent over 10 years in the aviation industry as an aircraft technician and product manager. As different as they sound in the industries are similar. His passion included customer satisfaction and innovation. So welcome, Tony, and please uh, take it away. Thank you, Anne-Marie, and, and thank you to everybody who is attending today. Uh, we're very excited to um, show you what, what we've created and uh, uh, developed uh, for your industry, specifically with our, our Moffat Truck Monitor Forklift. Uh, so a little bit, uh, again, uh, my name is Tony Danicky, um, Product Manager uh, with HIAB USA, uh, dedicated to our truck mounted forklift line. Uh, in the United States, um, HIAB offers several different um, products to several different industries, uh, one being our namesake, which is the HIAB Articulated Crane, um, very popular in the, in the roofing and the drywall world. Uh, the next is the Moffat Truck Mounted Forklift, which we're going to be discussing today. Uh, we also offer the Princeton Truck Mounted Forklift, the Johns Red and Log Lift Loader and Material Handler, and then quite new to our, our portfolio in the, next, in the last couple of years is the Multi-Lift Hook and Skip Loader. Uh, so today talking about drywall specifically, um, which is you know what I understand this, uh, this audience to, to really appreciate. Um, uh, in talking about drywall and talking about the delivery challenges, um, and really what challenges have, have really driven us to develop um, technology to solve those challenges. Um, the first challenge that you know we, we all have experience with is overhead obstructions. Um, so as we're delivering drywall uh, to whether it be a residential site or a commercial site, um, th those are certainly a factor. Uh, power lines, uh, parking garages, residential garages, uh, any sort of of low overhang uh, is certainly a challenge. Uh, trees are an, are another one that that is a challenge. Um, narrow roadways, not only getting to your delivery site, uh, but also setting up your equipment to make your delivery. Um, we all know that you know boom truck uh, deliveries are the most stable and the safest when when the stabilizers are fully deployed and narrow roadways, uh, narrow alleyways, narrow driveways uh, don't always allow us to do that. Uh, property damage is also another challenge that I'm sure everybody's familiar with. Um, flower beds or eaves, um, fences, uh, you know, do the stabilizers punch through the, the asphalt driveway or the concrete? Um, that's certainly something that we all deal with. Uh, another challenge is product placement requirements. So, you know, does the uh, does the contractor want the the um, drywall delivered into a garage uh, because it's going to be raining all week, or because there's a, a theft concern? Um, do they want uh, the load around the back side of the home or the back side of the building? Maybe the only place uh, to take the drywall into the house is through the the slider door that's off of the deck. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times using a boom truck to get get that product to the, the back side of the house is quite challenging. Uh, boom truck operators, that, that's kind of a uh, a big challenge really in the industry and, and, and more so today than it, than it really ever has been. 
uh, finding those qualified operators, uh, and then you know making sure they're trained up to uh, up to the standards of the industry um, and the expenses that go along with that that training. Uh, and then the biggest the biggest challenge that we're all faced with uh, really has to do with safety, um, manual handling, uh, cart usage. Uh, a lot of times the conditions aren't aren't uh, aren't good enough for the cart to be um, pushed smoothly along. Um, job site setup um, is, is certainly a challenge. Uh, again, that full stabilizer deployment on your boom truck, uh, cone placement, um, caution tape setup. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of companies and customers have um, uh, rules for how that job site is set up to. Uh, ensure that maximum safety is is uh, is present at all times, uh, and then insurance uh, is certainly a, a challenge. Uh, if we're able to uh, offer a safer solution to a delivery, or offer a safer uh, delivery period, uh, do do the insurance companies compensate for that? Uh, and that that could certainly be a, a factor. So what are our solutions? Uh, what, are the, what is the solution that we're here to talk about today? Um, the solution that we're here to talk about today is what we call our M9 55.4 LP machine, which is low profile. So this machine was sp designed specifically for the drywall application. Um, it offers a low profile um, uh, delivery method. Uh, so the machine has an 81 inch overall height, even when uh, lifting a lift of drywall, or as you see in the picture on the right hand side, two lifts of drywall in that case. <clears throat> so it has 48 inches of free lift, uh, and free lift essentially means that you can lift the forks 48 inches off the ground without the top of the mast moving at all. So it maintains that 81 and 81 inch uh, overall height uh, with the forks 48 inches off the ground. So even though it does have an 81 inch overall height, uh, the mass still can reach up to a full 12 feet of lift height. So if you have four or five lifts of drywall on your delivery truck, uh, the forks will certainly get up to that top lift uh, and be able to lift it right off the truck and, and uh, make your delivery. What's different about this machine is uh, we've, we've incorporated our four-way system. Uh, four-way essentially means that you can travel four ways. So you can go front, forward you can go backwards and now you can go left and you can go right similar to what you see here in this picture so instead of uh in this picture here you see you know two lifts of looks like 16 foot board uh so instead of taking up 16 feet uh of space when you're carrying these two lifts you you engage your four-way mode and now you can trap this forklift will travel sideways um and take up a lot less room um in fact uh, empty with 48 inch forks this machine uh, in four-way mode comes in at 113 inches um, so you know which is uh, just a bit less than 10 feet of um, of space so you add a add a load on there and it may add a couple inches but still you're you're around 10 feet of, of space uh, perfect for narrow openings uh, those narrow alleyways or narrow roadways or narrow driveways that we talked about on the last slide uh, and how challenging they can be, especially it, what, with a boom truck operation. Um, you know, the, the fact that your stabilizers need to be fully deployed for a, a stable uh, delivery with a boom truck um, is a challenge and uh, certainly a challenge that this machine can, can resolve. Um, with this machine, uh, no issues with power lines. Um, so that overhead obstruction challenge is ticked off. Um, you know, I've seen tons of tons of homes where uh, you can't pull in the driveway without going under a set of power lines, and those power lines are relatively low in the grand scheme of things. Uh, with this machine, you can deliver as much drywall as you want right up that driveway uh, with no issues with those power lines. Um, it can access uh, places boom trucks simply cannot. Um, so uh, for a couple of reasons, uh, you know, the width is one of them, uh, the weight of the machine. Uh, as compared to a boom truck uh, allows this this unit to to go places where a boom truck cannot uh, and then then also the fact that it's three wheel drive uh, so this is an all terrain forklift uh, mud snow sand not a problem uh, for this machine it is again three wheel drive and, and can traverse um, pretty much anything 
Um, so again, uh, can access places boom trucks cannot. Um, minimal certification required to operate this machine. Um, so all it requires um, is your OSHA uh, employer forklift certification, uh, similar to that of a counterbalance forklift. Um, so uh, no NCCCO uh, certification required um, like you would with a boom truck operator. Um, another option that we offer uh, that is a solution to, to the market uh, in the drywall market specifically is what we're calling our drywall tilter forks. Now in the bottom picture here, you see the forks are flipped up. Uh, think of the hydraulic uh, forks on a boom truck. Uh, we've taken that same technology and concept and integrated it into um, our truck on a forklift here. Uh, so what this does is it'll flip a whole lift of drywall up on end and make it so one person can slide uh, a sheet of drywall off onto a cart or you know into the home or into the building. Um, uh, no, no more do you need two people flipping the the drywall off the forks onto a cart. Um, so it takes it takes it down to a single person operation. So where do we use this machine? Uh, it's perfect um, to offload full trailers at a job site uh, without the need for a boom truck. So this will deliver as much drywall as you feed it. Um, essentially what we see is, you know, a, a, a trailer or a, a straight truck delivering um, the first load with this Moffat on it. Uh, and then it, then it acts as a feeder essentially. So multiple tractor trailers in a commercial application uh, will come and feed um, feed the Moffat, uh, and the Moffat will will do the deliveries. Uh, it's perfect for parking garage access. Uh, so with that 81 inch overall height, um, it can clear a, a seven foot um, parking garage. Actually, six foot nine uh, is what 81 inches equates to. Um, so most parking garages it can go into. Uh, we know with a lot of the the high rise apartment buildings and commercial buildings. Uh, the only way to get the drywall up to um, up to the higher floors is through a freight elevator, and typically those freight elevators are only accessible through the parking structures. Uh, so getting the material into those parking structures has been quite a challenge in the past. With this machine, it's not an issue. Um, again, residential garage access. Uh, if the contractor wants to store the board inside the garage uh, in, the re in a residential uh, job uh, due to inclement weather, whether it's snow or rain. Um, and again, if there's a, th a theft concern, um, which uh, job sites seem to be a, a hot spot for theft. Uh, if they require access uh, to the rear of the building, again, that slider door, um, or just simply um, uh, putting the material where your customer wants it. Um, that's certainly a differentiator between you and your competitor is if you can provide um, that delivery exactly where your customer wants it, they're probably going to do business with you. <clears throat> uh, the ability to park the truck or the trailer away from the required delivery point. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of deliveries where you can't get uh, a boom truck or even uh, any sort of delivery truck right up next to where you're doing the delivery. Uh, with the Moffat, you're able to park the truck where it's convenient. Uh, it could be a quarter mile up the road. It could be the next block over. Um, it can be, you know, on the only paved surface that's in that on that job site. Uh, offload the Moffat and um, pick your load and, and and run the Moffat down the street a quarter mile if you have to. Uh, the Moffat is equipped with um, with a slow moving vehicle triangle, um, so it is able to be operated on the road. Um, legally. Um, again, all-terrain uh, capabilities, mud, snow, sand, uh, again, not a concern for this machine being all-wheel drive, uh, having uh, aggressive tire tread on it uh, to make that terrain um, you know, uh, traversable. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, less property damage. Uh, because it is such a, uh, such a smaller um, delivery mode method, um, you know, you're able to maneuver this machine easier than you would a boom truck or uh, any other sort of uh, delivery device that you may use. Um, visibility is, is phenomenal on these machines. So you can see exactly where both wheels are, uh, where your rear wheel is. You don't, you're not gonna run over the, 
the customers um, edging stones or flower beds by mistake. Um, it's very maneuverable. Uh, it's perfect for long load handling, uh, whether that's drywall, obviously, um, steel studs, lumber, uh, makes those narrow openings and alleyways um, easy to um, travel down with, with a long load. So a bit into the design of this machine. Um, this machine actually isn't new um, to, to the market. Uh, we offered it several years ago and um, phased it out. Uh, I believe it was five or six years ago. The demand since then um, uh, was, was kind of cyclical, but in the last two or three years, really high demand uh, from our customer base. Um, everyone's been asking for this machine. So uh, we took the opportunity uh, to start from the ground up essentially and rebuild this machine with some, some of our new technologies. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the, the first, um, the first thing I want to talk about is our interlocking seat belt. Now this ties into our, our operator safety systems. So what that means is this machine cannot be driven uh, unless the seat belt is fastened. So it ties to our parking brake. Uh, the parking brake cannot be released unless the seat belt is fastened. <clears throat> to take it one step further, we've we've added what we call our seat belt safety system. Uh, what that does is it incorporates uh, a seat presence indicator and a simple logic circuit that's looking for a seat presence prior to a seat belt fasten. If the machine does not see it happen in that sequence, uh, an audible alarm is triggered at that point. Uh, it's a real in your face alarm that, that you're gonna know that something is incorrect. Additionally, we've tied the side door, uh, which you see my little pointer here, the side door in, into that system as well. So if that side door is left in the up position, uh, it, again, it ties into that safety system and it triggers an intermittent uh, audible alarm to let the operator and everybody everybody around them know uh, that the side door has uh, is left open. Um, LED uh, lighting all the way around. Uh, so our work lights are LED, uh, our beacon is LED, our transport lights are LED. Uh, every light on this machine is an LED. Um, so that, you know, very low power usage, uh, very low heat buildup, um, and, uh, sorry, and maximum um, life on those components. Uh, lower and go, uh, which is a, a feature of our mounting, uh, our mounting system. Um, once the machine is mounted up onto the back of the truck and the transport chains are connected to the rear sill of the truck, uh, the operator typically would have to climb back up into the machine to relax the hydraulics and put tension on those transport chains. The lower and go, as you see here in this uh, in this cutout, uh, is a switch on the side of the machine uh, that relaxes the hydraulics from the ground. So the operator simply reaches up, hits this toggle switch, and bleeds off all the hydraulic pressure um, uh, in the mass of the machine, so it properly sits in the mounting kit. Um, our overhead guard. Uh, is ROPS and FOP certified, which is a rollover protection system and falling object protection system. So it is certified um, by ANSI. Uh, and we fitted it with a clear poly uh, weather guard so the operator um, doesn't get rained on um, or you know if any debris is falling, um, it doesn't hit the operator, but it is clear so they can see their their lift when the when the mat when the forks are above the overhead guard. Um, this machine has a tilting steering wheel, and this is actually the only model range that has a tilting steering wheel. Uh, so it allows um, for maximum operator comfort uh, and allows for full adjustability in that regard. So the seat's able to be slid back and forth and the steering wheel is able to be tilted back and forth as well. This machine, like all of our four-way machines, is fitted with full down load rest arms. Uh, so you can see them in these images here. What, that, what these do is allow the load to be placed on these load rest arms um, when you're traveling. So it offers a wider footprint and a more stable footprint for uh, the load that you are lifting. Uh, we use the four-way swivels um, off of our M8 machine, which is our bread and butter machine. Um, so the interchangeability is, is, is great in that regard. Um, 
we, we did that for our parts inventory purposes and just the, the overall strength of the four-way, uh, the M8 four-way swivels is, is superior and, and certainly good enough for this machine. Uh, this machine's fitted with our tier four final engine, which is a Kohler KDI engine. Um, this is a diesel engine, 56 horsepower. Um, and what's what's important to note about this engine is that there's no DPF filter at all uh, and no DEF fluid required. So even though it is tier four or final, uh, these two components are not required to meet those emission standards of the EPA. Uh, we do this by a high pressure uh, fuel system, an EGR and a DOC, which is essentially a high heat catalytic converter. Uh, and it gets those emission levels where we need them uh, to be without DPF or DEF. Uh, the engine is completely ECU controlled and monitored. Um, it, it, uh, actually has a lot of functionality but um, you know one thing it does is uh, it, it monitors your external uh, ambient temperature um, and uh, limits your um, your throttle input based on on that so what what that means is if it's negative five degrees outside uh, the operator goes in fires the engine up uh, it's not going to let that operator give it throttle input until that turbo sees adequate oil pressure um, to ensure that you don't damage the turbo by by firing it up and taking off right away. Um, there's no glow plugs on this on this diesel engine. It's all ECU controlled. Uh, the starting procedure is ECU controlled. Uh, it uses a grid heater system that heats up your intake air um, prior to it going into the intake manifold, uh, which allows for maximum fuel atomization. Uh, this is a throttle by wire. Uh, engine, so your throttle pedal is electronic. Uh, it goes through your ECU and then sends a signal off to your engine at that point. <clears throat> On this machine, sorry, I thought there's a question that came in. Uh, On this machine, uh, we've integrated our digital display, which is brand new to our Moffitt model offering. Uh, on this display, uh, it shows the operator a lot of things in a very um, uh, intuitive fashion. Uh, so it shows your fuel level, uh, the RPM of the engine, your battery voltage, engine oil pressure, hydraulic oil temperature, coolant temp, coolant levels, uh, engine hours, uh, pretty much anything that you or uh, a technician need to know about the machine immediately. Um, it also offers some diagnostic information as well. So if the code that comes up uh, from your engine, it'll display your fault code on this screen. Um, and, you know, I'll, from the technician's standpoint, uh, allow the technician to start the, the troubleshooting process uh, from this screen without the need to plug in uh, any sort of diagnostic software. Um, also on this machine and all of our uh, Moffitt models uh, manufactured in 2020, uh, this machine and all those units are fitted with our High Connect system. Um, so this allows uh, not only uh, HIA, but also the customer to see machine diagnostics and GPS location data. I'll talk a little bit about that here in the next couple of slides. So High Connect, uh, like I mentioned, uh, is a connected service. Um, it's cloud-based, so essentially the machine communicates with the cloud all the data from that machine is stored in the cloud and then accessed by a user portal. Um, it is uh, it does share real-time data um, about equipment operation uh, and condition via that web portal and then several reports can be created from that portal. Uh, this helps the customer monitor um, productivity. Um, is the equipment being utilized um, enough or, or too much? Um, the service needs uh, so you're able to see your uh, your service schedules um, if you're set up with a maintenance plan um, and allow you to minimize your unplanned downtime uh, and help you schedule your your service uh, there's a safety component of it as well uh, so you're out there you're able to see what your machines out there are doing um, and what your operator is doing correctly and and uh, incorrectly in some cases and then it is also able to monitor operator performance um, so you know do you have uh, the best operators um, on your equipment um, and you know it, it, it 
it points out areas that they may need to be trained on. Are they continually overloading uh, the machine? Are they uh, operating it on inclines that um, beyond the gradeability of the machine, et cetera? Uh, so on the GPS side of things, um, it does offer today uh, asset tracking and utilization. Uh, so in this photo here, you can see a red line. This is this is the route that um, the truck with the Moffat on the back took um, throughout the day. Additionally, it, it will show you a different color line for the route taken when the machine was dismounted from the truck, so under its own engine power. Uh, so you can zoom in real tight, um, and you can see exactly where that machine traveled on that job site. So if you get a customer calling and saying, you know, your operator delivered um, a lift to drywall around the backside of my house, but when he did that, he uh, tore up my yard and the neighbor's yard or whatever it may be, you can zoom in uh, very close to where the delivery happened and, and look exactly where that machine traveled. Uh, and you can see, you know, okay, yeah, they did go around the backside of the house, but they didn't go on the side that that the customer said that you know they damaged they went around the other side or whatever it may be uh, so you're able to really dive dive down deep and, and see exactly what your operators are doing um, it does help you with route optimization um, so you can see your entire fleet in, in one map uh, you can see are your are your trucks passing one another on, on the road uh, can you do some work with route optimization to ensure that uh, you're using your assets uh, efficiently um, and then it, it, it does pinpoint um, and screen grab uh, event, events and faults uh, from a GPS location standpoint. So not only do you know that you had, say, a, a high coolant temp warning, you know exactly where and what they were doing when that high coolant temp warning popped, uh, popped into the system. Um, so, you know, we are continuing to develop this, uh, this system uh, every day. Uh, and in the future, we're we're attempting to uh, develop technology uh, to tie into a delivery confirmation uh, piece. So um, you'll get an alert, or your customer will get alert an alert. However, you know we set it up where they know exactly when their product was delivered, uh, and that'll be based on um, obviously the GPS location of the equipment, but also uh, the mast functions and and what the machine's actually doing. Uh, so there's a sequence of mass functions and uh, component functions that are required to do a technical delivery. Uh, and the, the machine will know that and be able to communicate it back through High Connect um, uh, using this technology. Uh, and then tying in delivery errors as well. So operational errors, again, that goes back to, uh, you know, inclines or not, not properly using the stabilizers or overloading the machine, uh, and things like that. On the data side of things, uh, we're able to monitor quite a bit. Um, today, uh, we're able to uh, transmit to the portal uh, service history and reminders, um, and that's done through our internal um, ERP system. Uh, warning notification on your engine parameters. Uh, so is there, was there a fault that popped up um, from your engine? <clears throat> Um, you're able to monitor your hours of the machine, both idle hours and power usage, uh, and overall engine hours, uh, fuel usage, and then you can pull trend reports on any of those data points as well to see what your machine's doing over a period of time. Uh, in the future, we're, we'll be developing the product even more um, to pull more detailed engine performance data. Uh, there's a lot of data points that come off of that Kohler engine. Uh, uh, so we're, we're looking into um, just which ones are relevant really for our customers. Uh, you can pull as much data as you want, but until you uh, present it in a way that's, that's valuable to your customer, it doesn't really matter. So that's what we're working through right now is how to build that value for you. Um, we are looking at uh, an operator notification system. Uh, so not only telling uh, the fleet manager or the, the company owner that's looking at the portal on their computer what's going on with the machine, but also notifying, notifying the operator that's on the machine. So telling them that they're making an error right then and there to prevent uh, anything more serious from happening. Um, if they're operating on a grade that's beyond uh, the rated gradeability, gradeability of the machine, 
it's important to let that operator know right now so they can correct that before it becomes an issue, not only just tell the, the fleet manager. Um, so also tying in shock loading. Uh, so did something hit the machine? Did the machine drive off of a loading dock? Um, whatever it may be, uh, those are important things to, to, um, to capture and to uh, communicate. Also grade and angle. Um, again, uh, looking at the grade that the machine's operating on uh, and letting the operator know. Uh, the machines are all rated at 30% grade ability, uh, but you know, what does that look like in a real world? Uh, you don't know until it's too late in most cases. Uh, so letting the operator know what grade they're operating on is gonna be um, a way for that, that operator to understand their machine even more. Uh, and then also tying in our safety system. So that seat belt and side side door um, safety system that we were just talking about a couple slides ago, uh, tie that into the high connect system as well, uh, where you know if that operator is not wearing their seat belt properly or they're driving with their side door open, it communicates that back to uh, the portal and then logs it. Uh, and then uh, MLI monitoring. So MLI is a system that we're working on that essentially is, uh, think of uh, overload protection, but for uh, a forklift. I won't go down a rabbit hole with this because uh, this is kind of um, new technology that we're working on, but essentially what, it, what it's doing is it's monitoring uh, the weight that you have on the forks uh, and then monitoring the configuration of the machine. So is the mast retracted? Is it extended? Are the stabilizers deployed or are they not deployed? Um, so uh, it really uh, gives the operator uh, and it, it will give the fleet manager, whoever is doing the portal, a really good uh, understanding of exactly what that machine is doing and if that operator is operating that machine properly. Sorry. Um, so, uh, you know, I shared with you the machine um, that, that we've developed. I uh, shared uh, the challenges um, that, that you know, you're faced with in the industry and what our solutions um, are with this machine. Um, but when, what I want to share a little bit more about is exactly who we are, who is HIAB USA, and what can we offer to you other than uh, a solution for your specific challenge. Um, we can offer you uh, direct sales. Um, so we are completely factory direct. Uh, we do not work with dealers uh, for the majority of our equipment. Uh, we offer direct service. Um, so we have um, 150 factory trained remote technicians uh, and 28 branches that are full of uh, factory trained technicians um, for your service. So um, there's no one better to work on our equipment than us. Uh, we know the equipment better than, better than anybody can. Um, we do have in-house engineering, uh, which we do all of our truck layouts, uh, whether it be loader crane installations, uh, multi-lift installations, um, truck mounted forklift mounting kits and uh, sales layouts, uh, or any sort of modification that may be required to your machine or your truck or your boom. Uh, we do all that engineering in-house. We do also offer uh, in-house technical support. Um, so. Uh, that's not only to support our technicians in the field, but also uh, to support uh, our customers that may have technical issues uh, that they're trying to resolve themselves. Um, and that's available to you. Um, we do offer, uh, do have a regional distribution center for our parts network. Um, so our, um, our facility in Indianapolis, Indiana supplies all of North America um, with parts. Uh, so all of our shops, all of our customers, um, are supplied uh, from Indianapolis. Um, this is a 43,000 square foot facility uh, and they stock around 16,000 individual SKUs uh, and have a 95% fill rate. So, um, you know, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, uh, we can ship from there uh, until 9 p.m. Um, so if you place an order at 7 p.m., uh, we'll have it on your front, your front step the next morning. Um, the 9 p.m. ship till uh, time really serves the West Coast as well. So if the West Coast can get an order in by 5 p.m., we can have it on their doorstep the next morning. Uh, so if there's anything that you guys need, questions, 
you know, if you want to quote on one of these M9 machines, uh, please contact us at the, at the number that we have here. Um, we'll get you directed to the proper um, the proper sales rep. Um, and uh, I guess at this time, I, I'd be happy to take any any questions. Hey, Tony, it's Anne Marie. We do have a couple questions. Uh, sure. First one is what type of what type of truck or trailer is required to utilize the M9 4W? That, that's a good question. Um, so really, we can adapt most trucks or trailers um, to accept this machine. Um, the, the machine comes in about just you know about 7,600 pounds or so. Um, so we'd certainly work with our engineering department to configure your uh, your straight truck or your tractor trailer. Um, you know, work with you on what type of payloads are required, what type of deck space, uh, what states you're operating in. Um, we can pretty much uh, adapt any truck um, to to accept this machine. Okay, perfect. There's a couple more questions, but I just wanted to call out to um, attendees. Again, we have three handouts available to you. Um, so if you want, just uh, click on those PDFs and start downloading them as we read the, the next few questions. Um, are there different tire options available, Tony? There are. So um, on the four-way machine here, um, the front two tires are skid steer style tires, um, and we fit those as standard. Um, and really, you know, these tires are the front tires are essentially required for this machine uh, because the way that uh, the machine transitions from standard mode into four-way mode uh, and the front wheels turn themselves in uh, the skid steer tires are required to um, uh, essentially scrub uh, when they're moving from standard mode to four-way mode i'm making the motions with my hands i know you guys can't see me but <laughs> but it but it, help, it helps me uh you know visualize it um, so, you know, the skid steer tires are required on the front for that, that purpose, uh, so it doesn't tear the tire up and also so it doesn't tear the pavement up or the grass up that the machine's sitting on when moving from one mode to the other. But the rear tire, uh, we are able to um, accommodate any other uh, tread style um, that the customer wants. So turf tire, tractor grip tire for maximum uh, terrain ability. Um, all the way up to a, you know maybe a 12 ply industrial tire uh, for high wear life. Um, so we yeah, we do certainly have some different options um, uh, for tires on these machines. Okay, and two more questions. First one is when can we expect this unit to be introduced into the market? Yeah, that, that's excellent. Um, so we're able to take orders for them today. Um, and you actually, uh, the people on this call are the first ones essentially hearing about this machine. This is our uh, external launch uh, officially. Um, so we are able to take orders today and we're looking for um, an early uh, Q4 delivery into the US um, uh, this year. Um, so place the order today, we can, we can get you the machine by the end of the year. That's no issue at all. Thank you. The last question I see is, we have an older version of this model in our fleet. What is different about this one? Yeah, uh, great, great question. Um, like I mentioned before, this isn't essentially a brand new model to the market. It isn't a brand new solution to the, the market, but we did start from the ground up uh, and introduce a lot of our technologies that I, I chatted about a couple slides back. Um, so, you know, the, the biggest difference between this model and, and the legacy one is, is the engine. Uh, so this unit has the Kohler uh, Tier 4 final engine. It's a fantastic engine, ECU controlled, and it offers us the ability to really monitor what's going on in that engine and on that machine using High Connect. Uh, High Connect again is is our telematic system that we just chatted about. Um, so that that's a big technology boost over the over the previous version. Um, also, our operator safety systems are are uh, a difference a, a difference between this machine and the legacy machine. So our, uh, our seatbelt safety system, our side door safety system, um, th those are you know, certainly, um, certainly uh, safety technology improvements over the last ones. Uh, and then we made some all, various minor tweaks as well. You know, the, the clear overhead guard, uh, that, that wasn't um, a reality on the old machine. Uh, LED lighting uh, on this machine. 
Um, and then just some of the, the other minor tweaks um, and, and improvements that we've made across our entire uh, product portfolio, we've, we've made in, uh, a part of this machine as well. Okay. And two more just came in. Um, will we ever be able to mount the machine with tilter fork? Yeah, so that that's certainly that's a good question, and that's a question that comes up often. Um, uh, just to explain, you know, maybe where that that question came from. Um, when you when you fit this machine with the drywall tilter fork, uh, you are not able to support the machine during the mounting and dismounting process on that fork. So that fork attachment actually has to be removed prior to mounting or dismounting this machine on the back of the truck. Um, where that becomes challenging is with deck space. Uh, so if if you're hauling this machine with the drywall attachment to a job site with a full load of drywall on your truck, you lose about nine inches of the rear uh, space on your deck. Um, doesn't sound like a lot, but it can make the difference between um, you know carrying a, a full load uh, versus you know a load that's maybe down. Uh, uh, four lifts or, or six lifts uh, at that point. Um, so yeah, that's that's certainly something that we're co we're conscious of and something that we're developing um, uh, as we go to be able to to, to figure out a way to do that. Um, so I guess the the answer to that question is uh, maybe, and uh, we're certainly working on it. <laughs> okay, is there a lifting height limit in four way mode, for example, to lift over private privacy senses in a four-way mode. Right, yeah, so um, some of our other four-way machines uh, with 12-foot mass are mass height limited to 10 feet, uh, and that really has to do with stability when you're in four-way mode. On this machine, and because it has a larger wheelbase than most of our machines do, uh, there is no limitation on lift height when you're in four-way mode. So you do get your full 12 feet of lift height in four-way. Now, I'll say that with an asterisk. Uh, you never want to travel with a lifted load. Um, you always want to keep the load as low uh, as possible and, and as back uh, and back as far as possible uh, when you're traveling. And can you identify if a unit has high connect or not? Um, we, we certainly can. Uh, we can tell by the serial number. Uh, but for the customer, uh, the easiest way to tell is looking for the antenna. Um, so on this model, the antenna will be mounted uh, right near your your air filter, which is uh, an external component on this machine. Actually, let me see if I can go back to the slides that show the drawing of the machine here. Yeah, so here you can see the the uh, external air filter, uh, and you can kind of just see it down back behind here. But this is actually the high connect antenna, this little disc. Uh, it's about a six inch disc, and you might be able to see it here in this picture as well. Uh, but that will be your high connect antenna, and that's the easiest way for a customer to tell if their machine's fitted with high connect. Perfect. Um, another question on what is the added weight for the tilting fork? Yeah, so the that's a good question. Uh, the tilting forks weigh about 500 pounds, um, but the way the machine's configured, that doesn't reduce your capacity. So you still are able to maintain 5,500 pounds of lifting capacity with those forks on there. Okay, and that oops, one more just popped in. Have we changed the seat switch since they are going bad in a year or less? <laughs> uh, yeah, we we actually have. Um, so I'm sure that question um, came from from somebody uh, rather technical uh, that has some experience with our our first versions of this uh, of this um, system. Um, but yes, we've changed the seat switch, and we've also offered uh, we're also offering a, um, a connector that's sealed. Um, so the the failures that we're having to do with corrosion. Uh, from what I understand. So, you know, if we can keep the water out of that seat switch, um, the better for us. Awesome. Okay, that looks like you've gotten through all the questions. So thank you for answering those. Um, and on behalf of AWCI, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us on today's AWCI Convention and Intex Expo Reconstructed.
As a reminder, this solution showcase was recorded and you'll receive a link to AWCI's online program library following the conclusion of today's broadcast. Uh, thank you, Tony Benneke, for um, sharing your knowledge of HIAB with us on the Moffitt Truck Mounted Forklift features. And for everyone, be on the lookout for emails with details for upcoming AWCI's convention and Intex Expo reconstruction events over the next several weeks. So thank you, everyone. Have a productive day and stay healthy out there. Thank you. Thank you very much.